Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. So today we will be continuing our Mechanized Tactics series. This is part 3 and this is following on from the uh, Armageddon Steel Legion versus Tau Battle Report. Now, uh, the, I'm quite happy that I was able to get that battle report up in the middle of the series because I was able to display a few tactics before the battle report. And now, you know, some of the obvious ones, the way I use my armored fist platoons. And now we're going into some of the maybe less obvious tactics that I was using with my Armageddon Steel Legion. So it's good because you'll be able to maybe watch this video and the next one and then go back and re-watch the battle report and be like, oh, hang on, yeah, I can see what he was doing there now. That's sort of the point of it. And if you haven't seen that battle report yet, guys, I would recommend it. It's, it is really, really good. And um, yeah, that's it. I just recommend that you watch it. So... Going on to part three of this of this tactic series, we're going to be looking at uh, the what I call firebase slash distraction uh, formation. Okay, so it's a firebase plus it's also a distraction formation. Uh, essentially, guys, this is where the main firepower of your army is going to come to. The Chimera armor fist squads do provide a lot of anti infantry firepower with the heavy bolts, heavy stubbers, las guns, plasma guns, but uh, the main damage dealers of your army are going to be in this firebase. Now, I have playtested this extensively with a mixture of artillery I've gone, and tanks. I've gone pure tanks. I've gone pure artillery. And I can tell you right now, the best thing to run in your mechanized army is pure tanks. Okay? The problem with artillery, and this will become clearer later, is that they're just too fragile. Your firebase is going to be the main source of your damage and it needs to be able to absorb all the incoming fire that's going to be going against it okay um you saw that in the battle report if i had taken artillery uh the hammerheads the fusion guns they would have bloody hell they would have absolutely just torn through it really quickly um so yeah so i've i've just i've from experience uh, I would say that pure Lehman Russes are definitely the way to go. The only exception that would be is if you play in an ITC format where, and you're playing a lot of ruins where you, you have to use indirect fire to be able to dig your enemy out. That's the only caveat to that. But basically, guys, you want the Lehman Russes. Okay. Now, the reason for this is, is like I said, you need to be able to do a lot of damage to your opponent. And Lehman Russes are really, really good at putting out the firepower. But... They also need to be able, like I said, to be able to absorb a lot of damage. So that's why you need you need that toughness 8, you need that 3 plus save. If you can buffer it with Psychus to a 2 plus save, that's amazing. So, what kind of Lehman Russes do I recommend? Okay, well, in my army, I like to take wep uh, weapon systems that can fire over 36 inch range. Okay, if you notice a theme with my army, everything has a 36 inch range if possible. So all the heavy bolts on the chimeras, the heavy stubbers. It's all about, with this army, being able to lay down serious long-range firepower. Because the thing is, is that the majority of your enemy armies that you'll be facing, their standard range is going to be 24 inches, and their sort of optimum range is going to be 12 inches for their rapid fire. If you've got a standard range of 36 inches across your entire army, then... It makes a big, big difference. So, to that end, what I like to take is a mixture of battle cannons and executioner plasma cannons. Okay, battle cannons have got a 72 inch range, they've got strength 8, they've got AP minus 2, D3 damage. They're a good, solid middle of the road weapon. I do not leave home. If I'm taking a hybrid force or I'm taking a mechanized force, I do not leave home without two to three battle cannons. So I take two in my Armageddon Steel Legion force. I also take two Executioner Plasma Tanks, as you've seen. Now, I just want to say, if you wanted to run all Executioner Plasma Tanks, go for it. If you wanted to run all battle cannons, go for it. It's just those are the two weapon systems I've found to be the most effective because they can do damage from turn one. The martial cannons will struggle to get into range. Uh, and so, you know, Punisher Cannons you don't really need because you've got plenty of uh, Strength 5 shots already. Uh, Exterminator Auto Cannons I'm not a big fan of, and Eradicator Nova Cannons are actually, 
you know, relatively decent. They're AP minus two, but they also ignore cover. So Eradicator Nova Counts are actually better at digging infantry out. But then again, you're not really struggling for anti-infantry because you have all the heavy bolters. Uh, and the Vanksha is just generally terrible. So, you know, naturally that leaves only two options, and that is the uh, execution of plasma cannon and the battle cannon. Now, um, if you were playing Destroyer, you would obviously have like a 42 inch range on all these plasma weapons. That's really, really good. That that makes a big difference. 36 inch range is pretty, pretty good. But these guys, your fire base, it's, their purpose is to break the enemy toys. And to do that, they need to have good long range firepower. So that's why I found the eradicate. Uh, Executions to be have a little short range, but they 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 can get the job done. They generally have to move like sort of, uh, you know, four or five inches in the first turn, and then they're able to uh, lay down serious firepower. Now, the key to um, the key I just want to say I just, the key to getting this formation to work is to also pile on the sponsors to your Lehman Russes. I I just find that. You want to have sponsors in your Lehman Brothers. I'm a big, big fan of sponsors just because it's the first time in many editions where sponsors have been any good. So, you know, I like using them. Uh, and number two, um, if even if you get rid of all the sponsors, I run eight plasma sponsors, two on each tank. Uh, and if I got rid of all of them, that's only 120 points. And, you know, what could I get with that? Like one basilisk can change, almost a manticore. I'm swapping out eight weapons for one weapon. So that's why I like sponsors on my tanks. Um, so I tend to have the plasma sponsors and then I keep a cheap heavy bolter for the whole mounted weapon. Uh, I don't like heavy bolters on my Lehman Russes on the sponsors. Partly because each Lehman Russ has already got one heavy bolter. And partly because I already have two heavy bolters and a heavy stubber per Chimera. I'm already running uh, 12 heavy bolters. Plus, you know, I'm already running... 18 DACA weapons on my um, all my chimeras combined but like I said the point of my lean is to break the enemy toys so to get the, because I'm running so much plasma uh, I have found absolutely essential to be able to uh, mitigate the damage caused to myself by overwatch uh, overwatch overcharge okay so to that end, I take three regular Lehman Russes and I take a tank commander. Now, if you wanted to take two tank commanders and two regular Russes, that's absolutely fine. The minimum I've found I can get away with is one tank commander. But often the enemy will target him and kill him and then, you know, I'm in a little bit of a pickle. But I tend to keep him a little bit further back. So he's just in six inch range of ordering Russes around. Now, because I've got two executioners, that's a lot of plasma shots coming from both of those tanks, an average of 11 shots, 7 from the turret, 2d6, 2d3 from each plasma sponsor, so that's four, an average of 4, 11 plasma shots, that's 22 plasma shots from those two tanks. They need, and I overcharge without fail every turn. My tank commander's job is to use, I believe it's the order gunner's uh, kill on sight, which allows you to reroll ones to hit. Uh, I think that's the right order, but whatever it is, it is the order that allows you to reroll once to hit. And I use that on one tank, and then I use Inspired Tactics, the Stratagem, which allows me to do it on another tank. So that's absolutely vital. You're going to be doing that every single turn your tank commander is alive, so you make sure you're keeping five or six command points for that. Make sure you're factoring that in when you're building your list. That's why I like to take a brigade. Now, um, the other tanks, obviously, have got plasma cans as well. And what if the tank commander gets taken out early on? I still want to be able to overcharge. And I've still got a command reroll if I need to get rid of one of those reroll ones. Um, what do I do though? I'm going to be taking damage you know, from overheating plasma. This is where I take the tech priest. Now the tech priest is absolutely essential for the castle for two reasons. One, like I said, it heals damage from overcharge. Gives you a bit of redundancy in case the tank commander goes down. Also, however, your tanks are going to be drawing the majority of the enemy's anti-tank firepower. You saw, if you've watched the battle port, you saw it. My opponent, for the first four turns, just concentrated pretty much on my Lehman Russes. My Chimeras were pretty much unscathed. I had four of them left by the end of the game. And that happens quite a lot. That happens very often. So, 
you want your tech priest there to be able to keep them in fighting shape. I would say my tech priest is the MVP for 99% of my games when I use my arm against Steel Legion. Okay. My opponent, my tower opponent in that game, and in most of my games, uh, my opponents say that the most annoying thing about facing my army isn't all the armor. It's the fact that even when they do damage and leave rushes, with a few lucky rolls, my tech priest will often heal 12 to 15 wounds back on my tanks. He's doing, he's, you know, he just, he's really good. And then I've got jury rigging as well. Jury rigging is a strategy that costs one command point and you just get to heal one wound on one of your tanks. Absolutely fantastic. Really, really useful. Means on average, you'll be able to heal three wounds a turn between jury rigging and a tech priest. Now, you could run two tech priests, okay? Running two tech priests would give you a lot of redundancy against, you know, your tank commander blowing up. Um, but the only... I have found that two tech priests is absolutely insanely good. But it's almost like you don't need it to be that good. The tech priest's job is maybe not to keep the tanks alive. It's just to keep the tank going for as long as possible, if that makes sense. Like, it doesn't matter if you end up losing all your lean rushes by sort of turn 4, turn 5. At that point, they've probably done their job. Um, it's just the tech priest is just there to just maybe prolong the inevitable. If you take 2, it means you're there to get some serious repairing going on. Serious repairing going on. So that's it, guys, really. You want lots of plasma, lots of DACA. These... Um, this fire base works well with any regiment trait. If you're Cadian, you can stay still. You can get lots of natural reroll ones to hit from staying still, which really helps with the plasma. I was saying if you're running all executioners, you want to probably go Cadian regiment. And if, you, um, if you're not, then you probably want to either have a mix or go all battle counts with plasma sponsors. Um, yeah, and so... The other regiments it works well with Valhallans it works well because obviously you uh, in terms of a damage output you uh, you don't you know you, you in terms of your uh, what's it the lead, grim resolve isn't it where you count the number of wounds taken as sort of half so for the purposes of what uh, damage profile you want so Valhallans are good for it I'm against the legion are good for being durable you ignore AP minus one Restorians give you longer range which is perfect for your 36 range plasma cannons. Um, Cadence, like we said, we roll once. Catachans let, get lots of rerolls on the random number of shots. Um, Talon's really good because even though it doesn't protect you uh, and it doesn't really in increase your firepower sort of directly like the Catachan and the Cadian one, it does mean that you can move and shoot heavy weapons without penalty, which adds an extra element of maneuverability uh, and also allows you to um, move not lose not lose any firepower on your sponsons by moving and shooting so um, the last thing I would say to uh, about this formation is you need there's a second layer to it I did think about putting this in a separate video but I think it's pretty I think it makes sense to put it here okay the Armoured Sentinels in my list are not attack unit. They're a really, really important unit. Now, I have gone on about Armoured Sentinels previously, so I don't really want to go over old ground. I'm just going to talk about how they specifically work with this firebase. Okay. Now, the point of the Armoured Sentinels is to be able to provide a bit of deep strike deniability because they can go four inches in front of the rest, or four and a half inches in front of the rest of my units. And that means any deep strikers that get lucky charge won't be able to consolidate into uh, into my tanks. So they're good at doing that. Uh, and they're also really good at being a distraction unit because I take armor sentinels and I put las cannons on them. And people ask me, what do those sentinels have? And I say, las cannons. And let me tell you, when they hear las cannons, your opponent will direct firepower against them. But the interesting thing is, is the majority of the time, your opponent won't, well, the majority of the time for the first turn, your opponent won't direct anti-tank firepower against them. What he'll do is he'll think, oh look, they're sentinels, they've only got six wounds, they're not too tough, I should be able to deal with them. And he'll shoot some small arms at them, and then he'll quickly learn, hang on, they're toughness six, and they've got a three plus save. That makes them actually really, really tough to remove. And when I take Armageddon Steel Legion, they ignore AP minus one, and the heaviest weapon 
your opponent will shoot at them in the first turn will probably be something like a heavy bolter. And they just ignore it. I have had a Daka Storm Raven. I kid you not, it had assault cannon, it had heavy bolters, it had hurricane bolters. Uh, fire all its small arms into one of my armor sentinels. Didn't do any damage. Did like one or two wounds. Just ignored AP minus one. Which is fantastic. He thought he'd be wounding on fours with his uh, with his uh, heavy bolters. He was wounding on fives. He thought he'd be wounding on threes with his assault cannon. He was wounding on fours. It made such a big difference. So, <laughs> they're there as a distraction. They will generally survive the first couple of turns, uh, first turn, and then what your opponent will do when he realizes that arm sensors are actually really tough and he's going to struggle to crack them open with regular firepower, he'll turn anti tank weapons on them. And when he does that, that's an absolute godsend. If you lose all your armor sentinels in turn two, that's absolutely fine because more than likely that means you have, your Liam Russes have had a turn off from being shot with anti tank weapons. And then if your opponent doesn't shoot them, if he refuses to shoot them because he still thinks they're really crappy sentinels, that is three las cannons a turn that he's going to be hit with. That is actually very, very significant. When you think about it, uh, that is a serious amount of firepower. That's uh, an average of three shot, uh, three hit, three last cannon hits over two turns. Um, that's absolutely fantastic. You know, that's gonna that's gonna do some serious damage. Um, and I was gonna say, yeah, and that works even better if you're Cadian because you get three last cannons rolling once to hit, and then if you use the pound them into dust uh, or overlapping field of fire stratagem I should say you get plus one to hit with those sentinels on a specific target that's three plus to hit sentinels with las cannons we only wants to hit that is very powerful so guys you see how all these elements come together you've it's the whole way the army works is it puts makes the enemy have to make really tough decisions do they shoot the Lehman Russes which are going to be hurting them or do they shoot the uh, sentinels, which are going to be hurting them? They probably won't have enough firepower to deal with both. And if they do spread the firepower out, you'll generally find that that's fine. Because you'll take less... That you know, The best thing your opponent can do is spread his firepower out across your sentinels and your uh, firebase. Because you generally won't do enough damage to cripple either uh, part of the firebase slash distraction. So you see how... There's a lot of elements to this army which maybe aren't quite as obvious as like, you know, zipping a Chimera up on, on its own on a flank. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope it's uh, given you lots to think about and uh, it's been useful for any of you who are considering mech or who use mech mechanized armies. Um, yeah, the, the next couple of videos that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be looking, I'm going to do a, I think I'm going to have one last video and it's going to be looking at what stratagems I like to use in the army and how I like to deploy the army okay uh, just we'll do that as a sort of two-in-one video I think because like this one um, if I did an individual video for each one uh, it'd only be like a two or three minute video for each one I'm expecting it to be quite quick the next video so, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful. Something for you to look forward to. Uh, I have another idea for a good video series. Uh, another sort of basic tactics video series. But maybe looking how to apply those basic tactics. So, that's going to be good. Uh, and also, I have been extensively playtesting the secret army. Which I can't tell you about. Because it is any information on it is classified and all documents have been redacted and if you were to find out then you would have to be killed they are the hints I'm giving more and more hints away each time no one has got it yet there's been lots of guesses down in the comments and um, I want you guys to keep on guessing okay keep on guessing no one's got it yet it's been some very close guesses but no one has yet got the uh, got it right. No one has yet got the right answer to what is the secret army that is going to be coming onto the channel very soon. It is all painted up. It's fully painted. I just need to get a few more games into practice with it and uh, yeah, get an opponent who's willing to take it on. So 
there you go. Lots of hints. I want lots of people to try and guess what it is. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys next time.